GM has a pretty serious problem with their blower resistor harnesses overheating, melting, and even catching fire. Specifically on GM trucks with this style blower relay and resistor. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what it looks like on these Chevy Express vans. They also use this exact same style resistor in the Silverados and GMC Sierras, and they also suffer from the same issue causing vehicle fires. However, theirs are located on the inside of the truck, so the connector is not a weather pack connector like what you're gonna see on this van. Let's open the hood and take a look. There is our culprit. <laughs> yep, look at that one right there in the on the far left. A little bit of discoloration on the pin, judging by the color of the wires here, or lack thereof. You can tell that this part has already been replaced once. So today we're going to replace it again. And also they say it's a great thing to also replace your blower resistor and relay at the same time. And also some people even say the blower motor should be swapped out at the same time. Not doing that today. But first of all, let's just go ahead and take some temperature readings of this while it's running. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try to get some thermal readings of that blower harness here. And we'll run it on all four speeds and see what it shows up with. I'm not expecting much to happen here, especially on the low speed, because all these wires are the same gauge, and low speed is a pretty low amperage, although it does run through the actual resistor down underneath. So we'll just continue to see what happens here. All right, it's been five minutes on low speed. Let's go ahead and move over to medium low. We'll give it another five minutes on medium low. So I may have got distracted with some chores around the garage and this is actually on for about 15 minutes on the medium low speed and you can see how that wire really began to heat up. I guess next let's jump up to the medium high and see what that does. I guess I'll let this one run for 15 minutes too, why not? Okay, there we have it, that's 15 minutes on medium high. Now we're going to switch to high speed, which bypasses the entire resistor and only uses the relay to the right over there. However, I do believe that it passes current through that far right wire. That was the one that looked a little bit burnt when I took the connector off. Let's switch it to high, see what happens. All right, and we'll give it 15 minutes on high. Wow, we're a little over five minutes in, and things are getting toasty, to say the least. We'll keep this running and see where we end up. Okay, so we just passed 15 minutes with the blower on high, and things are hot. Uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna let the test run maybe another 5, 10, 15 minutes. I'm keeping an eye on the battery voltage as well. The engine is not running. I really wanna see just how hot this thing is gonna get. Let's do it. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes and it looks like we've plateaued around 140 degrees Fahrenheit on that center terminal which is surprising because that's not the one that was actually burnt, it was the far right terminal. Anyway, let's get this thing out. In fact, I'm kind of curious what the connector internals look like on the thermal camera. Let's check that out in a second. <laughs> wow, almost a 160 degrees on that center pin, which is surprising again that it's the center pin and not the far right pin, although you can see some discoloration on there. I thought the far right pin would for sure be the one that was giving the trouble. Anyway, let's replace the blower resistor and this blower harness. So blower resistor, easy enough to replace. Two five and a half millimeter bolts on the side. 
and then this just unplugs from your blower motor. Pop this one back in. If it is a older van like mine and that's never been changed out, you might need to carve out the opening a little bit bigger. They did have a redesign and it takes up a little more space in the blower box than this one. I'll go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll work on the connector. And at this time, it's worth noting that you should grab a flashlight and just look down in here, check to make sure that it's not filled with leaves or pine needles or anything that's going to block the airflow because that could also cause issues of overheating your blower resistor. It does rely on airflow to keep itself cool. Right, I'd say that it looks pretty clean, especially given that it has almost 240,000 miles on it. So no need to worry about that. If it is filled up with a bunch of stuff, you can remove your blower motor with three screws, reach your hand down in there, grab it all out, and maybe just spray it down with a hose, make sure it's clean. Anyway, let's jump back into this resistor replacement and then we'll get to the wiring. Okay, old resistor assembly is out, new one is in. I soldered and did a little heat shrink over there, being that my setup's a little different than everyone else's. Yours will just plug directly into the blower. Mine goes through this relay pack. Anyway, let's jump into the wires. Before you cut yours off, listen to this. First of all, you're gonna wanna find a replacement that has quality wires. There are so many uh, cheap ones on Amazon that run a very thin wire, which is going to heat up even faster than these and probably won't hold the amperage that's going through them. So make sure you get one that has thick wires. Uh, Dorman does a lot of things good and a lot of things not so good, but this connector seems to be pretty good as far as the wire sizing. Now, secondly, as you can see, this comes with a very long length of wire, which is great. Whoever replaced this previously just did an awful job and cut every wire at the same spot. Instead of doing that, stagger the wire connections. That way you don't get one giant tumor inside of your wiring harness like this. Maybe have one connection here, another connection there, another there, 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 there. That way you don't end up with this giant gob of connections, which just looks terrible. So <laughs> I guess let's dig this thing out and see just how messed up this is underneath the wire tape and the harness. Oh my gosh. Oh, who did this? Oh, man. Let's take a look at this. So we've got Tiny, probably 18 gauge wires going into this 12 to 10 gauge connector. That's not gonna make a good connection. That's not gonna crimp right. But here's a good one. This looks like the main ground and it's supposed to be much bigger. They couldn't get it to fit into this 16 gauge connector. So they just got rid of some of the wires. That's insane. That's like half of the wires gone. So it's trying to flow the entire amount of amperage through half the amount of wires, it's a miracle that this spot didn't catch fire. And you see exactly what I'm talking about where it looks like a giant tumor because of instead of staggering one connection here, one connection here, 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 it's all gunked together like this. <sighs> oh my gosh. <sighs> well, hopefully there's enough length on this harness that I can stagger them further down into the harness and also another pro tip, do one connection at a time. That way you don't lose track of which connection goes where. So start maybe at the outside wire right there, cut that one back, go down, and then continue until you have all seven, six wires completed. Oh, that is disgusting. Well, I wait 
for this final joint to cool down. Let's go ahead and give it a test. That should be all six wires soldered up. Good to go. Make sure all four speeds work. Low speed, low medium, medium high, and high. Perfect. And throw some heat shrink on this last one and tie it all up in the conduit. And that is it for today. Maybe I'll take one more thermal camera reading of the connector here with the new blower resistor, see what we show. All right, we are back in the conduit. I have these two ready to mount back to the HVAC casing here. And best of all, no more giant tumors filled with all of this mess. So let's go ahead and tidy it up and take another thermal reading. Okay, back to recording on my iPhone 5 here. And let me turn it on low. And let's just keep an eye out and see how this thing does. We'll give it another five minutes. Okay, five minutes in on low speed. And don't see too much going on with the wires. You can see a little heat down in the bottom there from the resistor itself. Let's go ahead and switch it up to medium low. So the battery did die last night, um, but let's just uh, repeat the test today. I'm just going to do 25 minutes on high and see what happens. All right. 25 minutes starting now. Just past 15 minutes with the blower on high and things are hot. <laughs> About 25 minutes and it looks like we've plateaued around 140 degrees Fahrenheit on that center terminal, which is... I am very glad to finally have this fixed. No more worries of fan fires. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.